Hey there, Pathless Peddlers. Today we are here at Clever Cycles and we're gonna take a look at perhaps one of the most pimped out Bromptons you can possibly put together. So check it out after the bumper. So we're here with Todd, and uh, Todd's one of the owners at Clever Cycles, and you've also put together one of the most unique Brompton builds that we've ever seen, and you just took it on the tour, right? Yeah, uh, spring break, I uh, rode out uh, from Redmond, close to Baker City, through the, the Old West and Painted Hills bikeways with uh, camping gear. I found lots of snow and ice and rain and, uh, and good times out there. <laughs> cool. So you've got one of the most uni unique Brompton builds that we've seen. Uh, let's uh, talk us through the bike. Functionally, the, the biggest deal is that I've changed from a six-speed to a nine-speed using um, a kit of parts uh, from Thai Parts Workshop in Hong Kong that adds uh, three cogs, derailleur cogs, to the rear. That uh, grows the gear range, um, both the high and the low end. What was the lowest uh, lower gear inch that you were able to get with this combo? Uh, with it using a, the reduced gearing option up front and an 18 tooth cog, I believe I've got 25 low, uh, as a low gear inch. I could go a little lower with a 19 tooth cog back there. Let's talk really broadly um, about the titanium parts. So all, like, all the small bolts have been changed. Yeah, um, we offer uh, a package of parts made by Thai Parts Workshop that we call the diet package. <laughs> uh, there's a whole lot of steel bolts and things, not very sexy parts on a super light Brompton even that don't need to be there. Axle bolts, LSD or lower stop disc. The bottom bracket itself is steel and we can replace that with Thai. So let's talk about uh, Thai's material really quickly. It saves weight, but it also has another advantage in that it doesn't rust, is that right? Correct. Yeah, it doesn't need to be finished with, uh, you know, it doesn't need a protective finish, essentially. You don't have to worry about uh, salt environments and so on uh, causing uh, corrosion. It's also a bit flexier. So let's let's talk about the seat post. It's really striking, it's titanium. Uh, what does it add to the bike, aside from saving some weight? Mainly, it adds comfort. Uh, the flexiness in the seat post is more significant elsewhere. The seat post being so long, um, your your body weight causes a good deal of uh, bend or, or flex in it. That's the mantra in the bike wheel world is, you know, you want vertical <laughs> compliance and lateral stiffness. Uh, it's easy to do with a uh, several foot long uh, titanium post. Mm -hmm. Putting suspension in the seat pillar suspends your body, but it's not activated at all by by pedaling, so it's kind of the best of, of all worlds there. Speaking of suspension, let's talk about this really interesting uh, looking uh, suspension block you have there. It's called the Scrow Wave Spring. Sort of like stacked wavy washers that uh, get compressed. A metal spring returns the energy that it collects in activation. The polyurethane damps it more. Cool, so it's a, it's a great upgrade uh, aesthetically, but also some performance uh, benefits. Theoretically. Theoretically. <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't compared my time trials so no. <laughs> before and after or anything. So another real obvious uh, change to the bike is the larger uh, wheels here and this kind of axle system. Can you talk about that? The wheels themselves are three inches in diameter, uh, machined aluminum. This uh, modification allows uh, you to pull out the right side easy wheel by, oh, I don't know, a good four inches, uh, making it much more stable. TPW, uh, Thai Parts Workshop, makes uh, not just the weight saving kit, but things that kind of enhance the aesthetics. The hinge clamp levers as well, they, they add a, quite a bit of function. The clamp itself is asymmetric, and you don't have to back it out so far that the clamp is allowed to spin. It saves wasted motion. In so if you're, if you're competitively trying to fold the Brompton, then this is a it a must have. Add uh, minutes to your life. Right. <laughs> I've uh, wired in a sine wave revolution, which is uh, a nifty little well sealed uh, box that produces USB output. Out of all like the Dynamo Hub to USB uh, gadgets, this is the one that you guys prefer the most? This is more modular and can be moved easily from, from bike to bike without moving the light. So one thing you pointed out um, earlier on the, the Dynamo Hub is that it uses uh, spokes without a uh, elbow bend. These have uh, st are straight pull spokes, but if, if a spoke's going to break, it, it's almost certainly going to break at the elbow uh, where, it, where it bends, and these don't have that. So this, this is a tour I went out for the first time without having a spare spoke with me, um, maybe a little foolhardily. So thank you uh, so much, Todd, for giving us a tour of your super unique Brompton. And uh, if you guys are interested in uh, any of these modifications and how you can upgrade your Brompton, uh, be sure to give Clever Cycles an email. And uh, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. And if you want more Brompton related content or general bike nerdery, don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>